Hi, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. Well, for this week's guitar lesson, I wanted to do something that was fun, maybe a different tempo, the kind of thing that you don't typically play on an acoustic guitar by yourself. Um, and so I, I wanted to get into this kind of R&B, soul, funk. wasn't really sure what to call this. There's some blues. There's a lot of elements that go into this. But it's a really fun rhythm to play. So we're going to be looking at timing, rhythm, cadence, and all of that stuff as we break down the lesson. I'm playing this on the B&G Coletta. This is the new line of acoustics from B&G. It's a great guitar. Uh, I love this thing. I play this around the house quite a bit, and I'm really becoming very attached to it. It's perfect for this style of playing. So I've got the lesson split into two parts. In this video, we'll go through the first half of everything. If you'd like to watch the second half, as well as download the tablature and access the on-screen tab viewer for this, so you can slow it down, you can loop sections, all of that stuff, you can get that by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP293. All right, so my goal for you in this lesson, besides learning how to play this composition, which is full of ideas and takeaways that you can apply to other things, but my goal for you is to think about timing or cadence a little differently, just to give you some different ideas for rhythm, to make your rhythm, uh, to enhance your rhythm playing. It's very easy as a solo guitar player when you're playing by yourself. <laughs> get stuck playing, you know, sort of predictable strum patterns, maybe playing the old blues shuffles and things. And this is to give you some different ideas for, for how to play some, some more interesting things. I was listening to Whipping Post by the Almond Brothers the other day, and I was just uh, interested in the, the time signature of that song, just the whole feel. It's very out of the box. So what we're going to be learning is not that out of the box, but it is something that is kind of non-conventional, I guess, for a solo acoustic guitar type composition. But I think that's what makes it kind of cool. And I'll also show you how to take these rhythms as we get into this and how to make a few changes to them so that you can get completely different combinations using the same technique that we're going to be using. So there's going to be a lot of information you're going to learn and you're going to get this cool composition that you can play. So let's talk about the chord structure. So we're going to be playing this in the key of G minor. It's really a 1-4-5 chord progression but it's a minor it's in a minor key, so it's a minor one, minor four, be a C minor, so you G minor, C minor, and then your five chord is a major. It's going to be a D chord or a D7, actually a D7 sharp nine. And I'll explain that as we get to it. That's that Hendrix chord that uh, people call it that. But um, that's what we're going to be playing over. Now we're not going to be playing those chords, but that's the chords underneath uh, what we're going to be doing. So if you have a friend that wants to play along, you can print out the tab and you'll see the chords listed there and that's what your friend would be playing. But you don't need a friend. That's the beauty of this. You can do this by yourself and it sounds great on its own. All right, so let me play through it, just this first part, so that you can, we can get this in our heads and then I'll explain uh, how to think about counting it in and all of that. All right. <laughs> That's the groove, that's the timing of this that we're going to start with. So it starts by uh, coming in this little set of pickup notes, which happens on the and of three. So if we're counting it, we'd say one and two and three and. That's where you'd start it. One and two and three and four and one. So then that's the one of the the first real measure. This is Think of this as a pickup measure, and now we're starting the song here on that note, which is a G note. Let me show you the notes. I'll show you how to think about them and all of that. But we're starting with our ring finger on the fifth fret, fifth string, and then third fret, uh, fourth string, fourth fret, fourth string, fifth fret, fourth string. That's the first little walk, walk up there. Now, these notes are coming from the minor pentatonic scale. Actually, this note is more of a passing note, but I'm thinking about the minor pentatonic scale. And most of all of the licks, actually all of the licks we're going to be playing are coming from this minor pentatonic scale. So we're playing in G minor, so we're, I'm playing the G minor pentatonic scale. And what's cool is I'm right here in pattern one, good old pattern one that we all love. And you can see all of those notes are butting up here on the third fret. That, that makes the third fret my root fret. It's also the fret, if you're playing a G minor chord, it's the fret that you're barring. That's your root fret, kind of home base when you're thinking about this stuff. Now what's cool is that's the same fret uh, even if you're playing a G major chord. The only difference between that major and minor is you flat the third. Or in our case, we take our middle finger off from the major chord. Uh, but that's what we're going to be playing over. And so that's where this 
these notes are coming from. And as I said, this note is just a passing note. So I think it's chromatically, it's sort of connecting the dots between here and here. And that's another little tip. You can do that if you've got two notes on a in a scale like that and you're you're playing through them, you can most of the time you can connect them by playing the note in between them just to give you some kind of not out of the box, but just some a different flavor, I guess, to your to your solo. All right. Now had now the next thing that I play after that is I play another G note, but it's an octave lower. So I'm going to come back down to the same root fret. That's the bar. So that helps you visualize this. So you're not just thinking about loose notes here that aren't connected to anything. We have to keep this chord shape, or at least keep the bar in our heads. So I'm going to play that uh, third fret sixth string while that note rings out. Then I come down here with my index finger and play third fret sixth string. Now that note, that third fret sixth string, is what throws the timing a little bit and makes it sound a little different. For example, if I didn't include that note, it's going to sound a lot more on the beat. Listen. That sounds more like something you can you can uh, you can latch on to right away. But just to keep it interesting, let's add in that note. So if we're counting that, it's one and two and three and four and one and. So that comes in on the and. All right. So we've got that far. Then I come up here and I bar the first three strings on the third fret. But we're going to play strings two and three. And I'm going to do a hammer-on to the 5th fret, 3rd string. Alright, so after the hammer-on, then we're going to play just strings 2 and 3 behind the 3rd fret. And then ring finger goes down on the 5th fret, 4th string. And then I come down and play strings 3 and 4. So that bar that I was barring the first 3 strings, now I'm barring the first 4 strings. And I'm playing the middle 2 strings, 3 and 4. So we have... All right, now let me give you a takeaway from this. So if you're ever playing something in a minor key, let's go to a different key. Let's uh, play something in A minor, for example. You have right there in that minor pentatonic scale pattern one, you have these two hammer-ons you can do between strings two and three and strings three and four. And you can play around with that quite a bit. I hear a lot of artists using that. You can, you know, all these little combinations that you can get out of that. So just remember that when you're playing something in a minor key, whether it be lead or rhythm, you can work that in. So that's where that comes from. It's just minor pentatonic scale. Now after that I went... And it, so it's one, two, three. So as I'm barring the first four strings there, playing strings three and four, I'm going to come up here with my ring finger to the fifth fret fourth string and play two of those. These are downstrokes of the right hand. And then take your ring finger off, so you're back to strings three and four behind the third fret. All right, so there's one other thing I forgot to mention, and that's a muted strum that happens on that two. So let me let me just count it out. So you have one and two and three and four and one and two right there. After you do the octave, there's a, a muted strum after that. So just remember that it just helps with your timing. You don't have to do that. But I find that either a muted strum or hitting the body of your guitar just really helps uh, set the, the, uh, the tempo. All right, so let me back up. I'm going to play through this again so that you can have this as a reference. And I'm also going to try and count as I play it. So hopefully I can do that both at the same time. So here we go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and three. Now notice right there after I went and three, nothing you don't play anything. So that's the, the little dead space that happens. And three and and then when you get to the end of three again, you're gonna go back to where we started with the pickup notes. And three and four and alright, so that's your first 
part. And actually that's the same groove that carries throughout the whole thing. Once you can do that, and what you may want to do, um, it, it just depends on different people learn differently. Some people like to use a metronome, something that locks you into time. You slow the metronome down, or you can just use your foot to tap along. But just try and don't overthink it. so I had to interrupt this for just a second. As I was editing the video, I realized that I forgot to play the intro the way that I played it at the beginning of this video. It's just one little part that I left out. It's not that big a deal. It's just the five chord. So when I started this, I started on the five chord, which is a D7 chord, and I played it five times. So I went, then, then into the stuff that uh, we've already covered. So I did want to mention that. I wanted to include this little add-on uh, for those that are confused, maybe you don't know where that went. That's all I'm doing, just playing the D7 chord, playing the middle four strings, five, four, three, and two. You can look at the tab to see how to make the chord. And to count that in, we go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And so you can see that this still comes in on the end of three like it did before. I just forgot the D7 chord. All right, back to the lesson. All right, so now that we've got that basic rhythm down, we're gonna apply that to the four chord or the minor four chord. And what's cool about this is we can just take everything that we've done here and do it up here. So now our bar is on the eighth fret. So that just resets everything. So now you have your G minor here. If you come up to the eighth fret and bar, you have a C minor. So now we can play, we can start here on the 10th fret, fifth string. Right? It's the same exact pattern that we played here. We're just, we moved it up. And so that allows us to play over the four chord. So now let's put the two together. Let's start from the beginning. One and two and three. Back to the one. Um, the other, only other thing I would mention there is I'm using some palm muting to, to play that part. And that's different, a little bit different every time. I think it gives it more of a funk type feel when you, when you, when you start to, to, to mute those uh, notes instead of having them ring out. You could do it either way though. Okay, so then we go to the five chord and I played to get us to that note. So let me show you this. That's just three notes right out of the G minor chord. It's the third string, fourth string, and fifth string. So I started there on the third fret, third string, with my index finger, ring finger on the fifth fret, fourth string, middle finger, and it's important to use your middle finger for this, on the fifth fret, fifth string, because the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna slide that up uh, uh, one fret. So that's gonna come up to the sixth fret on the fifth string. And the reason I'm using my middle finger for that is so that I can let the other fingers fall into place and play this chord. Now what I'm actually doing here is I'm playing a D sharp, uh, D sharp seven, sharp nine. Just, just know that this is a half step up to where we're gonna go. And that's a common, this is another takeaway for the, those of you that are looking for ways to enhance your uh, your, your jamming or your rhythms, you can, when it's time to play the five chord, you can always go up a half step and then come down to the five chord and then back to your one chord. It just gives it a, an interesting feel and you hear that a lot in music. So that's what we're doing. I'm sliding up to the D sharp uh, chord. So let me show you how to make that. Uh, one of your middle fingers there on the sixth fret, fifth string, um, your ring finger goes down on the sixth fret, fourth string, I'm sorry, sixth fret, third string, while your index finger goes down on the fifth fret, fourth string. And you can see that's the D7 chord shape. If you think of D7 down in first position, same chord shape, but we're playing it here so that our middle finger's on the sixth fret, fifth string. And now to make it that sharp nine, that Hendrix chord, we're gonna add our pinky to that, which is easy to do because it falls right into place there, but that would be on the seventh fret, second string. And you're only gonna play those middle uh, four strings, five, four, three, and two. The reason that that's referred to as the Hendrix chord is you hear that a lot in Voodoo Child and uh, that's also in uh, Purple Haze, but that's the chord. The 
Hendrix would use a lot. It's just kind of a weird, kind of jazzy, sort of bluesy. Uh, just almost sounds like like a clash of notes, but it's cool. All right, so that's the D7 sharp, or sorry, D sharp seven sharp nine. But we're gonna go. We're gonna slide all of that down one fret to make it the D7, and that would be your five chord. It's actually the D7 sharp nine. And so when I played it, I hit the D7 once and then went. Played a little lick there, which is right out of the minor pentatonic scale. And to play that, I'm just really bouncing between the fifth fret and the third fret. But I'm starting by sliding into the fifth fret, uh, fourth string, third fret, third string, and then the fifth fret, third string. And then a quick slide from the 6th fret back to the 5th fret on the 3rd string. Then back to the 3rd fret, 5th fret, 4th string, and then 3rd uh, fret, 4th string. And then we go back to the 5th fret, 4th string, and then play the octave below that, which is the 3rd fret, 6th string. So, that's the lick. It's kind of a cool lick. Very kind of predictable sounding is a lick that you probably heard quite a bit. And that note, now that's not in the minor pentatonic scale, but it is in the, in the blues scale. That's considered your blue note. It's that extra note. So that's why that note works. Okay, and then after that, we go right back into the same rhythm. All right, so now that we have all of that, we have the timing, we have all of the notes, let me back up and play through that one more time, and then I'll show you how to play through the second cycle where we're going to go into a call and response style. All right, so we have one and two and three. Now the second time through, as I mentioned, call and response, we're going to play. There's your call, and then the response is the same thing that we've been doing. We just keep going back to that for the response each time. And so what that allows you to do, you can improvise, you can jam, you can play any notes that you want, and I'm just playing notes right out of the minor pentatonic scale, making it very easy. So I'm sliding up to pattern two of the minor pentatonic scale for G, and I'm got my middle finger, so that means I got my middle finger on the 7th fret 3rd string. My index finger is on the 6th fret 2nd string. So it's 3, 2, 3, 2 string numbers. And then after that, so that's your call, your responses. Same response that we've been using. So what I do is I give you four different calls that you can use. So the first one... The second one. So after we're gonna go back up to pattern two, sliding back to that seventh fret third string, index finger goes down on the sixth fret second string, and then we're gonna play the eighth fret second string. So we have you can see I'm just outlining uh, pattern two of the minor pentatonic scale. There's a slide from the seventh fret to the fifth fret on the third string. Down to the 3rd fret, 3rd string, and then back to the 5th fret, 4th string. And after that, we go back to the same response. Now, the, so those are your first two. So the first one goes, the second one goes. Now the third one is where, we, now this is where the song is going to go to the C minor, so what I played was... And so I started in pattern two again. That's just straight up uh, pattern two of minor pentatonic scale for G. And so is that. But then I came up that one note to put us in the note from the, a note that lives within C minor. And so I could just hear that by ear. I didn't think about it with my brain. I thought about it with my ear to get to that note. 
I just knew that that note was where we needed to go. So that's the kind of thing that you'll develop as your ear develops over time. You'll know that you can just pivot one way or the other uh, to get to the, the key that you're going to or the chord that's, that's about to come. All right, so let me show you how to play that. It's a, it's a bend and release, a full bend on the eighth fret first string. It's actually a pre-bend and then release. And, and then when you release, you come down to that sixth fret first string. And then the eighth fret second string. Middle finger goes down on the seventh fret third string. And then I slide up one fret to the uh, eighth fret on the third string. And then once, once I'm playing that, the response to that is the same response like we did before, but we're going to do the response in C. Because that's where the song would change to the C chord. And I only played that C response once because we only do that once. So. And then. We're going to come back to the G. So, after, so this is where you're going to have to be kind of quick. You're going to have to play. So after you played, got that out. In fact, you may even want to skip that last note if that makes it easier. You're going to come down and we're going to play strings one and two. Actually, we start on the second string, so it's two and one on the third fret. So we're just going to bar the first two strings on the third fret. So it's two, one, two. And then watch this. Just write down the pentatonic scale, or minor pentatonic scale. That's uh, five, three on the third string, and then the fifth fret, fourth string, and then back to that low octave. You can see that every time I'm hitting this note, I'm pretty much always coming down and hitting the low octave. That's a cool lick. That's like a Jimmy Vaughn style. Lick. All right, so let me back up and play through those four different call and responses. We'll start with the first one. I'll play through it slowly. We have one, two, three. Then I played the same get the same lit notes exactly as the first time to get us back to that D sharp um, 7 sharp 9 and then down to the um, the D7 sharp 9. I think that's probably a good place to end this part one video. We've covered a lot of material. Uh, in the second video we're going to go over the second half or go into that whole other part um, and as a premium member, you'll have access to that. You'll also have access to the tablature and the on-screen tab viewer. And if you're not a premium member, that on-screen tab viewer is a great feature. It allows you to slow down the playback. There's none of me talking. It's just you can highlight a section. You can loop that section. Um, you can, like I said, slow down the playback. You have a lot more control over just learning the, the information. Um, all right, so let me uh, back up then and play through this first half one more time. And then I'll see you in the second half for part two. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, click the subscribe button and also the alert bell so that you can be notified when I put out new stuff. Okay, here we go. One, two, three.